Guys, today we're gonna to work the collar sleeve guard. We're gonna work the collar sleeve guard and we've worked a lot of some basics in the class, but I'm gonna do a broad overview of the position, uh, how to control it, as well as a few sweep options and different transitions. As far as how to get to this position, you know, say we don't have any grips, we're in a neutral position. I always wanna keep my, my legs up tight to my body, close to my body. The farther they are away from me, the easier it's gonna be for him to grip, right? And then he can start passing very easy. So I keep my knees in close and I like to frame my legs. So that just means I use my hands to block. He tries to grab my pant. I'm already blocking. Try to grab. So I just start blocking. I can also move my legs too to make it harder. Try to grab my legs. Even if I'm going slow, it's just, it's harder to get a moving target, okay? So while he's trying to grab, I'm looking for one sleeve grip, you know, uh, give me this arm. One sleeve grip, you know, I can't control which sleeve grip I get. Sometimes I'm on this side, sometimes I'm on the other side. So it's very opportunistic what we're getting here. So he moves around, go to grab, yeah. I get my grip. If I can grab before he grabs, let go. That's perfect. From here I can go to a lasso, shallow lasso. We'll talk a little bit about this because people don't understand lassos online for some reason. But if he manages to get my pant, that's fine too. I'm just gonna pull my, my elbow towards the mat as I kick my, my pant towards his uh, hip. Okay, very powerful, right? I'm not doing this. So I don't have a lot of power going sideways. All my power is, is like up and down here. So imagine you're doing like a deadlift or something. It's like the same movement, right? So I kick and break, boom, lasso here. So I'm just utilizing a shallow lasso because I only have one grip. I cannot use a deep lasso because it's going to be super difficult. There are different variations on this. Maybe I could shoot for here, but I don't have any control with this side. So that's that's the reason we're going to stay on this shallow lasso, guys. OK, my foot's kind of draped on his bicep shoulder area and I'm pulling this sleeve. So you see how I bring my elbow towards the mat. I'm pulling that sleeve. OK, so it makes it hard for him to rip out. Try to rip. Okay, from here, he, you know, there's a lot of different options we have. The two main options, he's gonna either grab my pant and he can grab on the outside. If he grabs uh, outside, he grabs outside, I'm just gonna put my my foot onto his bicep and now I regrip his, his sleeve, okay? Now we're in the spider lasso guard, okay? If he grabs inside my leg, that's fine too. I re-pummel my leg inside. So look, I pull my knee towards my chest Recircle my leg, regrip. Okay. Very common concepts we use a lot. We just did it in fundamentals class, all right? You guys remember? Okay. His other option, he doesn't grab, so he stays kind of far away. So that's kind of our entry into the college sleeve guard. He's not giving that, me that arm, so I, it, there's just no way for me to get that arm right now. So all I'm going to do is go cross body. So I go across his body, and I'm going to grab his collar. At the same time, you know, I'm keeping that knee up high. I'm gonna replace my foot on his bicep or shoulder, depending on your height. You know, if you're tall, you can go kind of shallow you can, or lower on the arm. Uh, if you're shorter, you probably wanna go higher on the arm, okay? So once I, main, I get that cross collar grip, my foot's gonna go on the shoulder or bicep area, just like that. And now, before I start pushing him away, I wanna make sure I get a good pull on his collar. So I'm pulling my palm up, and I have a slight bend in my elbow, okay? So it's very powerful grip. Now I'm gonna push his, push his shoulder away. So I'm pushing with my foot as I pull with the collar grip, okay? Notice how his upper body kind of turns a little bit, shifting, all right? From here, I can stay here with this uh, shallow lasso, but to get into the full collar sleeve guard, I need to unlasso my foot to his hip. In the last detail, I'm gonna turn on my side as much as I can. Okay, again, guys, I'm pulling as I push my legs. Try to move, John, and it should suck a lot, okay? So that's the basics of how to get to this guard. So as far as maintaining this guard, again, I wanna make sure my hips are on the side. I have a good sleeve grip. This grip is gonna be very mobile, okay? So don't get so set and just keeping in one place. Depending on what he's gonna do, I'm gonna move this arm from one side of my body to the other side of my body, okay? The standard position is just keeping that elbow on the mat. And if I need to, I can flare it out more and uh, turn me this way, uh, that way, yeah. What I'm trying to do, guys, is open up this elbow knee space as much as I can. There, okay. All right, so I have the collar, sleeve, 
and I'm twisting his body. From here, we have a lot of different attacks. You know, the most basic attack is the Umapata attack. And so I, I can go for this attack anytime I see this space open or anytime my foot's on his hip, I can go for Umapata, okay? All right, so I'm here. All I'm gonna do is pull his collar and my elbow down or I flare it out and I shoot my foot, my leg as straight as possible on the side of his arm, okay? So what I don't wanna see is this, where you go shallow and you kinda of miss his elbow. So I'm pulling his, his arm towards me as I shoot my leg onto his back, heavy, okay? So notice I'm getting my calf like right on his shoulder. Here, I'm gonna keep his collar. If he tries to posture up, I use that grip to kind of stabilize his, his body. If I don't have this grip, posture up. You know, he's gonna rip up, especially someone very strong, okay? Here, so now I'm gonna cross over, and it doesn't really matter when I cross over, I can cross over with my back leg or my front leg. Sometimes I'll use that to kind of uh, keep your head up. I'll bring that over, and then I'll bring the bottom leg across, or sometimes I'll just kind of shoot this over and then triangle my legs, okay? So it doesn't really matter, you can do both. So one, two, or two, one, boom. Once I'm here, I'm immediately watching out for this leg coming across. Usually the guy's gonna either post his knee on my stomach, like that, and that's gonna suck, and then he has leverage to posture up. Or two, he's gonna, we call it a capoeira spin. He's gonna do like a cartwheel over my body, and then now I'm in a screwed up position. So again, here, he's got my leg. Oh, uh, it, so we'll talk about this in a second. So the umapata again, I have the collar sleeve and you know, I'm opening that elbow knee space as I shoot my leg straight. From here, I can cross his head from the back side or from the front side. Usually I'll do the front side if he's posturing up a lot and then I can bring his head down, cross over. From here, again, he's gonna try to either put his his knee on my stomach or try to jump over me. Uh, so, yeah, capoeira, to so go back. Uh, once, yeah, bring your knee back up. Once you do this a lot, you, you already kind of feel the guy about to go over. So look, I get my, so I'm here, I'm on the sleeve. I already feel that him coming close, go back. So I'm gonna let go of the sleeve and look, I go under his leg. Okay, go back again. So I'm here, he's got his knee up, that's fine. I already know he's gonna try to do something crazy. So I go off the sleeve. Guys, make sure this sleeve is in your hip, okay? For some reason, a lot of guys, they just kinda, they let the arm come out, I don't know why. Keep it in your hip the whole time. Here, I let go of the sleeve, and look, I go towards his ankle, and I'm shooting my hand straight up. Once I'm here, I'm gonna let go of the collar, and I post my other elbow on the mat, and I'm just gonna sit up. Okay, make sure that arm's in his hip, or in your hip, so he can't move. And then I'm always looking for a high grip here. Something on his back. I can grab the cross of the pill. Uh, just anything substantial you can get to kind of close this space off as soon as you can. Okay. We're not going to focus on how to finish this, but once you get here, man, it's pretty tight. Okay. So that's umapata. Typically, I'll go for this. Anytime I see that elbow knee space open, it's always there. I also will go for this if he grabs my pant. Because if he grabs my pant, that actually makes it easier for me to bridge my hips off the mat. If he doesn't have my pant, it's a little bit harder. Sometimes I have to go up higher onto his shoulder. But if he grabs your pant, that's a great sign for you to go for the umapata, okay? Boom, all day, all right? So let's talk a little bit about maintaining this, because that's a big deal too. When I'm here, I kind of showed if he goes, if he pummels his hand inside, I'm gonna pull my knee towards my chest and re-pummel. Even if, do it again, grab my pant. No, do it inside. Even if he grabs my pant, that's fine too. I re-pummel inside, okay? Boom, one more time. So it's pretty quick, don't go slow. Sometimes he gets his arm, do it again. Sometimes he gets his hand, grab my pant, but he gets his elbow in tight. So it's very hard to get anywhere. So now all I'm gonna do is kick my leg back towards the mat. Keep, keep tight. And look, I come back in. One more time. We pummel, he grabs. If, if he doesn't do anything, I can just come inside. But say, do it again, keep your elbow tight. Like he keeps his elbow tight, I can't get it in. I can try to come over, that's fine too, but sometimes he blo he's blocking me. So look, I, I fling my leg out to the, behind my back. 
and then I come back in. Okay? All right. So that's a very important part of maintaining this. If I lose this leg, grab my leg, you know, he can back step very easily or throw my leg across your body. Okay. All right. You got to keep maintaining that. All right. So my next attack we have, guys, is the triangle. This time, I'm going to bring his arm across my, my body, okay, over the top of my arm. And notice I'm going to keep the foot in the hip and the collar grip. From here, I'm going to shoot my leg over his head. So I'm pulling him into my guard, okay? From here, lock your legs, control the head, and now finish your triangle, okay? One thing that might stop you from doing that, if he has my pant grip, go grab inside, or just hold outside, actually. Hold it tight. I can't shoot that leg over if he's got my pant. It ain't gonna happen, okay? So in that case, what attack would I do? Como plata, yeah. Okay, if he doesn't have that grip, I can also go for triangle as well, okay? So the triangle, you know, again, I'm pulling his arm across my body with the collar grip, foot on the hip, and look, I bring my hip off the mat, lock that, your, that leg right on his neck, okay? From here, triangle your legs before you let go of this, the grips. Control the head, start to lock. If, if you feel him trying to put pressure into you, that's when I'm gonna do that shoulder walk, okay? What I see a lot of people do, they do this. Go back up. Poor John is back, getting tired, man. A lot of guys, they do this. They, ah, yeah, oh, he got out. So make sure you lock and then hold the head first, okay? With my grips, I'm pulling him into me. So you see the foot on the hip is controlling him. The other leg is going right on his neck. I'm only doing that to keep it from posturing or stacking me. So my, I want to keep my hips low and heavy. Okay. So that's a big deal concept. Say I'm in the spider guard. If I keep my hips off the mat, what are you going to do? Go into me. Get back. So I'm going to keep my, my back on the mat. Go into me. Okay. You know, if you're in a leg press machine, you, you want your back flat on that thing, right? <laughs> you're going to, going to crunch yourself up. Okay. So those are my two major attacks. Again, I have grasp my pant leg. Uma plata, boom. If he doesn't grab my pant leg, I have triangle, okay? So one really cool way to set up the triangle is when we're doing that pummeling battle. So if he pummels under, so when I re-pummel, look. Okay, so that's a really great attack. One thing, if you're shorter, it might be hard to do the triangle when the guy's standing like that. So one thing I do, say that same situation, and you re-pummel, I pummel him. So I'll lock my legs, but instead of going for the triangle, when I lock, I switch immediately to the arm bar. Okay. So that's a variation I like a lot. Sometimes it's hard for me to lock my triangle, or, or I go against a lot of big people. So instead, I just lash onto their arm, okay? So those are my main attacks. Some other things that might happen, guys, he might try to get his elbow to, to his knee, or just get, stop, just get your elbow tucked in. So now you see how he's got his elbow tucked in. That's okay. I'm going to push his hip as I pull his collar. And look, I bring my arm, I bring his arm on the outside of my leg. Okay. From here, I can just shoot that umapata. Again, whenever my foot's on his hip, umapata all day. Man, just go for it. Don't wait. Pull. So I'm pulling his elbow and knee apart. And then I shoot my leg straight to his back. Okay. Again, I'm not going this way because it's too shallow. I'm actually locking my leg onto his back. So it's the same move as a triangle, but it's, it's under his shoulder, all right? So that's a very, very important detail. One thing that might kind of knock me out or not kind of give me a lot of trouble if he gets his elbow to his knee. And in this case, I can't get back on his hip. You guys see, like I just can't get on his hip. That's fine too. Now I can either do that shallow lasso again, look for his other sleeve, or, I'm sorry, buddy. Or I can go to De La Hiva. Okay. Notice when I went to De La Hiva, I don't stay square. I go off to the side. So he gets his elbow to his knee. Now I can't get that foot back on the hip. Again, I can lasso, look for the other sleeve. I could even kind of stay here sometimes. Maybe the guy kind of relaxes and I'll pop it back in. Uh, but typically, you know, he starts doing this. Maybe he starts getting closer to you. 
so I, I don't want this to get compressed in my body. So I'm gonna unlasso the De La Hiva. And when I do my De La Hiva, guys, I don't wanna stay square with him. Again, I was already, when I did my collar sleeve, I'm on my side, right? So when he brings his elbow to his knee, I'm already kind of on my side and I can actually kind of move my hip more to the side to get a better angle for that De La Hiva. Okay, so I'm actually kind of rocking myself. You can't really see, but I'm doing a little butt, butt move here. All right, from here, I'm gonna replace my foot off the shoulder and I'm gonna go with my toes right on his belt knot. And I'm turning my foot to the side. Again, guys, all the details are important, all right? I was showing this, and if you guys kept doing this, but it's very easy for him to push my leg down, okay? Once he pushed my, if, uh, if I let him push my leg down, it's easy for him to turn into me now. Now look at my De La Hiva. He killed it, right? Okay, so here, I was on the shoulder. I'm gonna go foot to the belt knot here. If he goes to push down, it's very hard. If my foot's up, push down. Because, you know, your leg bends like this, right? <laughs> I don't know if you guys knew that. Here it doesn't bend, right? Here it's strong. Okay, from here, I'm gonna tuck his arm between our legs, or his leg. And you see how he's kind of moving back? And then the finisher is I push with the top arm in the collar. I'm pushing across my body. Okay, from here, depending on, you know, maybe you're rushed for time, you got 30 seconds to sweep somebody. Okay, just pop on up, right? Uh, maybe you can finish that. But a lot of times, you know, if you know the guy's very tough, you don't want to give them the chance to sit up to their elbow. Because now, it, you know, maybe you can finish it, but sometimes the guy, he's tough and he gets back up. But I, I don't have my guard anymore. So whenever I do these kind of sweeps, we call this like an off balance, De La Hiva off balance, I like to use my leg, my non De La Hiva leg, to either trap the near side leg and pull it to me. Man, easy, man. Less work, I just pull it to me, right? Here, now I can come up. Now, try to come up. Man, I got him. Ooh, that's one very good option. Another option here, if he's too close, I can't get that leg. I can also pull his top leg, his far side leg to me. And then look, same move. Try to come up. He can't come up, okay? If you want to get deeper into like the meta of jujitsu, I can also utilize these, my legs to kind of pull his legs into me. And then look, I can start attacking his legs whatever, without ever getting up. Okay. So I'm in a good position because his legs are off the mat, right? So man, I can start attacking. Okay. So that's a very, very good move. I, I really like that. Sometimes you just like, boom, I need a big move. Boom, I just throw it on somebody. Just like that, okay? One, a few counters, or one major counter when I go for this type of move set, he can, before, like, as I'm going to put my foot on his hip, or his stomach, he intercepts my leg. So as I go to put my foot on his hip, he catches my foot, and he's gonna try to push it to the mat, right? So that's pretty bad, we just covered, he can turn this way, putting pressure on my De La Hiva. When I'm here, I feel him starting to grab my foot, same kind of move, I'm gonna throw my foot to the mat, strong. But notice it's not here, it's away from him. Now, because his foot's here, I can even scoot, I can scoot myself more to the side with a stronger off balance. The more I scoot, the more off balance is gonna be. Now I can just go with my, my hand work or I can bring this back in too. So it's up to you. You can finish this way too. Um, grab, pull. Boom. So that's a good movement too. Now we're gonna look at one more move set from this. And I'll let you guys practice. And then maybe I'll do the end of class, I'll finish. So it's like, that's kind of cool. So I did this move here. We call this like an off balance, Taylor Heva off balance. But sometimes the guy's, he's got a good base and he's able to post that hand very strongly, okay? So I can either try to like pull him back up and then reshoot that sweep. That's one option or two. Sometimes I can let go make the guy relax and he, he comes up by himself and I can go for the sweep again. Okay, so those are very good options too. But sometimes the guy, he's very stubborn. He just, man, he keeps that arm down like he's not gonna move it, okay? He keeps his arm down, there's no sweep, that's fine. So now we're gonna look at a bolo, very, very basic bolo sweep. 
<laughs> John is shaking, man. So I, I'm gonna go off the sleeve. So it's important to order, guys. Every, everything's important, right? But make sure you get the order down. I'm gonna go off his sleeve grip to his ankle grip and off the collar grip to his pant, okay? So I go off the sleeve, he's posting. I can't sweep him anymore, I can't move him. I go off his sleeve grip to his ankle and off the collar grip to his pant. So the waistband, notice I didn't say belt. Sometimes that belt's not there or it's very loose. So when you go to pull, you know, it comes off, right? So I'm go grabbing right into his pants from here. Also notice I have my legs in the same positioning. My feet are in the same positions. I, I didn't switch my legs, right? If I take my legs out, there's nothing holding him. He can move. Okay, so here, ankle, pant grip. Now I'm just gonna do a Granby roll. I'm gonna do this first and then I'll show you what a Granby roll is. So I'm pulling my head between his legs, guys. So I'm using this grip on his, I uh, sit up a little bit more. I'm using my grip on his, uh, his pant to pull myself under. Okay, and so it's okay if he falls down, that's fine. I'm gonna bring my feet onto his hip, let go of the, the near side ankle, and I grab his far side ankle. One thing I want you guys to be careful of, don't extend that leg between his legs, don't extend it. Cause now he's got a knee bar, which isn't too bad for white belts. You can't do it, but for me, they can, they can break my leg pretty easily. Okay, so I keep my legs bent and I'm placing them into his hip. And also notice I'm on my shoulder, okay? From here, I have a lot of power. So I like to kind of rock into him a little bit. And now I'm gonna rock back and try to get my hips to the mat. As I rock backwards, I'm gonna flex my feet, my heels down, okay? So again, I rock into him, rock back. Boom. Keep, keep your hip up a little bit, John. Yeah. So now we call this monkey branching. Guys, never let go of everything. I, especially white belts, so you guys like to let go of everything. Let go, the guy gets away. So we call this monkey branching, just like, you know, a jungle gym, monkey bars. So I go, I'm not, I'm never letting go one grip without securing this, the second grip, okay? So I grab two on one to his pant, and then I go, very powerful grip, I'm gonna grab his, his uh, collar. Once you get that collar grip, it's over, man, you got him. So I look, I sit up as I do that. Try to move, John. I got him. So I'm kind of pushing him down into my legs. And now I can get my hooks and then the seatbelt grip. Start working my choke, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. So one more time, a lot faster so these guys can drill. So collar sleeve. He gets his elbow to his knee. I can't do anything. So I go De La Hiva. Foot goes to the stomach. I can off balance very easily. Or sometimes he's very, he's quick. He posts his hands, so now I'm going into a bolo. Once I'm here, my order is important. Don't let go of this and then go for the ankle because I, I want to secure his leg first. If his leg's kind of free, he can, he can actually pull this leg, pull it up. No, no, pull it up. I, I don't have anything on it, right? So make sure you grab for the ankle first and then the pant. Now I pull myself under. So I'm, 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 I'm already on my shoulder, guys. And look, I pull his pant towards me, or I pull myself to him, actually. If I can, try to keep your feet in the hip as much as you can. And now I can knock him over, keeping my weight onto him. Let go of the near side ankle, grab the far side ankle. And look, I push into him. As I come back, I'm gonna flex my heels to the mat. Now I monkey branch to the pant, just for a brief second, and then I, Hop all the way to that collar. Once you get that grip, that second grip, that's it, man. It's over. Once you're here, now I get my hook. I get this hook first. I look, I pull him down. I can even shrimp up. And seatbelt grip, second hook. Okay. One thing I want to say with Domopata, we didn't really focus on. I was kind of discovering, providing you guys. You know, if I get here and I'm able to get this down, it's very powerful. If I can get this tucked in, try to move, John. It's over. Hold my pant, other pant. I keep holding the pant. This man, he can't. <laughs> hey, game over, man, game over. Okay. It's a very, very powerful position. A few things I want to talk about. So 
just from training, you're gonna see the guy trying to break your grip, you know? They're gonna try to break your grip. There's a few different grips they're gonna try to, to get. So obviously they wanna grab this. Either here, it doesn't help. If they hold outside, I can elevate, helps me elevate my hips. Once he gets inside, you know, that's a very good grip. I have to break it either, or don't break it, or, or either re-pummel here, or I try to break it there. And I can come under, over. You know, if you're going with me, my leg is like, try to grab it. Okay, you, you have to fight. That takes some coordination and time to develop. That's why we, we do so much positional training, okay? You know, usually the guy, he, he can't beat that, so he starts attacking this grip over here. So he can try to grab my sleeve and try to break there. And it, that, that's pretty difficult to deal with, right? But just realize that it kind of opens you up to some more attacks. But let's look at how I would uh, deal with that. So if I, my first defense is, as soon as I feel I'm trying to grab, I'm gonna push that arm out, the, the far side arm even more. It's very hard. Now he's, he's forced to do a one arm grip break, which I can probably deal with. If he gets both his hands in, you know, now that's gonna be a powerful break because it's two against one, right? So I wanna kind of take this out of the equation, go to grip there. Okay, but he can still break this grip with one sleeve grip, one sleeve, yeah, go break, you know? That's fine too. Got a little bit of sweat on me, but that's fine. <laughs> that helps, that helps the grip break. Uh, so there's a few things I can do as soon as I feel I'm doing that, go for my sleeve. I can widen this space out. So I flare my arms out, try to grab. Okay, that's one thing. But sometimes the guy is just faster than you or stronger, he gets that grip. That's fine too. As soon as he goes to break my grip, from here, I'm gonna keep his sleeve and look, I break this sleeve grip. So I'm pulling my elbow back and then look, what do you think I'm gonna do? Man, I go right back. <laughs> so he keeps breaking. Eventually like he's gonna, he's gonna realize it doesn't work. I can also do this, say he gets a double sleeve grip. So look, this time I'm gonna use my foot on his shoulder to help me break. And I regrip. okay. All right, so that's very important too. I'm gonna to come back to this, but also, you know, the guy might try to grab the fart, the, the foot on the hip. You know, some guys are doing that too. When that happens, it's, it's like the grip break, the, the first one. I just kind of kick that like that arm back, okay? So going back to the grip break, one reason I don't really like the grip break and uh, I'm just gonna touch on a few topics here. If he goes to grip break my sleeve, he gives me his arm, right? You see his arm's coming to this hand, right? Go to grip break. Now I can start to, we can start touching on like cross, cross sleeve guard. So cross sleeve just means I pull his sleeve across. Now look, the elbow knee space is even bigger, right? From here, maybe next week we'll start touching on this, but look, I can start underhooking. Look how much space there is, man. <laughs> and then from here, we have a lot of different options. We can go to X guard here. I can pull that in. Boom. We have so many good options. We also have my friend, he just developed a new guard called the vice guard. It's when I get this leg over. And I come back in. And then this is, you know, we start getting into these deep topics. So, you know, if you guys are pretty brand new, you, you would have to go all, I would have you work two or three weeks just on that basic triangle umapata stuff. And then another week on De La Hiva. That's what we did. That's, that's why these guys are a little bit more advanced. That's all they did. And so now we would probably go on to this topic. So once you get to here, like you're kind of screwed. Yeah, I can't get this one. He's pretty screwed. So this is the vice guard. If you guys want to check out John Thomas, I'll probably link him. Very, very awesome guy. Very awesome jujitsu technically and competitively. Man, a super good guard. You know, from here, you can start attacking the Triangle. And you know, the, the power from this guard comes from, you know, you take the guy's mobility away. And also most people don't know how to pass this guard. They're just like, I don't know what to do, man. So you can you can do a lot with these guards. It's collar sleeve guard, okay? So again, you know, collar sleeve. I like to build it just for my sleeve grip and a, a lasso grip. He doesn't grab me. I go cross body there, okay? So to me, it's the same thing as just a, a, a spider lasso game. It's just here. And when I start going to this type of game, look how everything is geared to one side of his body. It's, so whenever you go collar sleeve, it's about attacking, you know? Umaplata, 
triangle de la Hiva. Okay. So, you know, when you get to these guards, man, it's about working. You don't, you don't want to just hold, you can, but you, you want to look for your submissions, okay? And eventually, you know, he, my partner, you can tell he's getting tired. A lot of times they're going to come down, put one knee down, and then, man, it's even worse. When they come down, man, it's even worse. Because all my attacks are more potent now. That's rough. You come down, that's because you get tired, you go down. That's exactly what they want. Okay. So there's so many more topics off this collar sleeve. I just touched on just a little bit. I mean, it feels like a little bit, but if you look, it's like 30 minutes long video. So.